Jesus Christ, the Bible says when he went before Pilate, they confessed that they did not have a reason why they could, could they, they were they could not have a reason why they needed to crucify Jesus. But because of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the people who were there, they were calling for the blood of Jesus. They were calling that he must crucify him, crucify him. And therefore, the leaders were not able to do anything because of the multitudes. They handed over Jesus Christ to the, the sinners who were going to crucify him. And the Bible says that he was taken to Golgotha. That is where he was crucified. And he was on the cross with three other uh, uh, thieves, one on the left and one on the right. We know the whole story of what I'm talking about. But I want to bring you to page to where we are. It is important to understand that a few things happened when Jesus Christ was on the cross. The discussion between, the conversation between the two thieves, one of whom was saying, save yourself from the cross if you are the son of man. But this other one, Jesus Christ never responded. But this other one responded, you and me are on the cross because of what we have done. And therefore, the cross, he was able to give up his spirit. He was able to give up his ghost. What I'm saying is that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And we all know of his crucifixion on the cross. And uh, there was a word that was put on his cross, the king of the Jews. And indeed, he was the king of the Jews. And not only the king of the Jews, he was the king of the world. And I'm one of the people who are apologetics that Jesus Christ is my king. He's my ruler. He's my lord. I want to help us understand that when Passover had gone, Mark records that the two or three ladies went to buy spices. These were expensive spices to help them be able to embalm the body of Christ. And as they went to the tomb, they bought the spices they were able to spend. I'm wondering, uh, how much are you ready to spend for the Lord Jesus Christ? Imagine these ladies, these wonderful ladies, are going to make an expense to be able to do something for the dead. I want to help us understand that you and me are alive. Are we asking ourselves, what is it that we cannot spend for Christ Jesus? What is it that we cannot be able to give for the body of Christ? What is it that we cannot be able to give for the expansion of the kingdom of God? These great ladies were able to wake up very early in the morning to go and buy spices. They were not only going to buy spices at normal price. They were going to buy spices at whatever cost. It doesn't it matter how much it was going to cost. They had a saving that they needed to spend so that they could be able to do a tradition. I want to help us understand. That is not what I came to say on this Sunday morning. I came to help us understand a few fundamental things that Christians must be able to observe. Number one, we needed to know that Jesus Christ is not dead. He is alive. We are commemorating the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we share this great service on this Sunday, when we are celebrating uh, Easter, and yet our churches have been, the buildings have been closed. We are celebrating Easter from our homes. I know maybe you are watching this telecast from your, from the comfort of your house. Maybe you are watching this telecast from your business area. I want to help us understand that these ladies who are yearning to see the body of Jesus Christ, embalm the body of Jesus Christ as their tradition dictated them. But as they went to the tomb, the Bible records they had a problem, they had a worry, they had an anxiety. They were worried, who will roll away the stone? We know how big the stone is, we have no men around about us. We are only three ladies who are going to the tomb to be able to access the body of Jesus Christ. And yet, there is a stone that is going to be an impediment for us. Their worry was not long term. When they went to the tomb, oh my goodness, the Bible says that they looked up and they noticed the stone had been rolled away. I do not want to go to the question, who rolled away the stone? I do not want to go to the question, what happened that the stone had been removed? Maybe there are so many theories of what many people are saying, but I want to believe. As you worry about where my food is coming from, as you worry about whether corona will kill you or not, as you worry about 
what will happen with our economy. I know and I know all of us are a worried population. In the entire world, there is some worry that is lingering in your mind. There is some worry of whether you come back and find your job again. There is some worry of where your food will be coming from. There is some worry, will schools open in this country now that we have COVID-19? You have some worry, will the stock of my food be able to take me uh, through all this time when we have a lockdown? Like I come to you now and I'm coming to you when we know Nairobi has been locked down. You can't come in Nairobi, you can't go out of Nairobi. And yet we needed to be able to move around, move around because men, humanity, we are social beings. We need to be able to move to visit our relatives. Some of our relatives are in Nakuru. We want to go to Nakuru, we can't go to Nakuru. Some of our relatives are in Mombasa. We can't, we want to go to Mombasa, we can't go to Mombasa. How some, some of us are worried what will happen to us. I want to help us understand. The Lord understands. The Lord knows. He knows it all. The Bible says that when they were worried who would roll away the stone, their big issue was the stone. Their big issue was who will roll away the stone. I do not know your big issue. Maybe your big issue is who will give you money that will be able to take to you, will to take you through this whole lockdown period. Maybe your worry is who will be able to give you money that you will be able to pay your, your rent? I know you have some worry. Who will do it this for me? This particular thing that seems to be a very big stone in my life, that seems to be a very big stone in my marriage. You are worried. Who will do it for me? I want to help you understand. The Lord our God, He goes ahead of us. The Bible says when these ladies were worried about who rolled away the stone, the angel of the Lord went ahead of them. And as a prophet of God, I want to declare to you, may an angel go ahead of your life to supply. May an angel go ahead of you to provide. May an angel of God be able to be sent in your life to run away whatever issue, whatever problem, whatever stone that is ahead of you. I want to help us understand. The Bible says, who will run away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? I want to let you understand. There is a stone uh, in the in, in the only uh, there is a stone in uh, ahead of you that uh, if rolled away, then you access your blessing. If rolled away, then you access a miracle. If rolled away, then you access your healing. May God in heaven be able to send an angel that will roll away a stone that will lay roll away whatever discouragement. Discouragements in our lives is a stone. Whatever we are going through is a stone but I want to promise you in the name of Jesus that God is not limited in power God is not limited in strength God is not limited in miracle he is able to do a miracle if he did it for these three ladies who are going to embalm the body of Christ he will do it for your family he will do it for your uh, relatives he will be able to do it for your business that you will make it where other people failed you will succeed where other people did not succeed why? Because the angel of God will go ahead of you. Let me help you understand. When the Bible says in verse number 4, But they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had been already been rolled away. The stone, the Bible calls it a large stone, had been rolled away. Sickness that has been discouraging you will be rolled away financial lack that has been in your way shall be rolled away. The confusion that is ahead of you that has been uh, worrying your life, it will be rolled away. I want to declare and decree that even Corona will be removed from our life. Corona will be removed from our nation. I want to declare as a prophet of God that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. These ladies were worried who will roll away the stone, who will roll away the disease, who will roll away the problem you are going through. I want to help you understand the Bible promises the hand of God, the hand of God of power, the hand of God of miracle, the hand of God of healing, the hand of God of blessing. May the hand of God come over your life. May the hand of God come upon over this nation. May the hand of God be over everything that we are going through. Why? Because we need it. Why? Because of the miracle that we need for us to continue.
you. Verse number five, the Bible says, when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white uh, robe sitting on the side. The Bible says, the women were shocked. When they saw the angel, they were surprised. When they saw the angel, they were shocked. Why? They didn't expect an angel in the tomb. They expected, they expected the body of Jesus Christ. And that's where my miracle is. They expected the body of Jesus Christ. And I thank God, the body of Jesus Christ was not in the tomb. And that gives me strength to be able to propagate that the body of Christ is not in the tomb. The body of Jesus Christ was not. They will have witnesses who went to the tomb and checked. They did not find the body of Jesus Christ. If you are one of the people who still think that the body of Jesus Christ is in the tomb, I want to let you understand. That's not true. I know and I know. The, man, uh, the body of my grandfather is in the tomb. I know and I know. The dead body of David is in the tomb. I know and I know. And I can, can declare categorically that uh, Hare Krishna is in the tomb. I want to declare to all of us. And I am so categorical that uh, Muhammad's body is in the tomb. But these women said when they went to the tomb, the body of Jesus Christ was not in the tomb. And I want you to know that the reason we celebrate the resurrection is because the body of Jesus Christ is not in the tomb. Let's go to the Luke chapter number 24. There is something very interesting that we will be able to find there. Luke chapter number 24 is a, a scripture almost talking about the same thing. But I like what Luke says in verse number 24. I love it. I love it. I can't paraphrase, but uh, allow me that we may just go there. Luke chapter, chapter number 24. Luke chapter number 24. The Bible says, verse number 6. The Bible says, when they... Verse number, let me pick up from verse number 4. As they stood, they puzzled too. Uh, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling clothes. Verse number 5, the Bible says, The women were terrified and bowed with their face to the ground. The men asked, Why are you looking, why are you looking among the dead for, the, for someone who is alive? That is what I wanted to get. These ladies... An angel comes, two angels come and shares with them, why are you looking for among the dead the one that is alive? That means they went to look for the body of Christ in the tomb, but Jesus the Christ's body was not among the dead. We needed to look for Jesus Christ's body among us the living. He is alive. And I declare, for us to celebrate this Sunday, Jesus Christ is alive. May Jesus Christ be alive in your family. May Jesus Christ be alive in your marriage. May Jesus Christ be alive in your body. I want to help you understand, Jesus Christ may be alive, that Jesus Christ may be alive in your business. Many of us are looking for Jesus, some things in wrong places. It's like you want to be able to uh, go give, look for a baby. And you are looking for a baby. The one, the baby you are looking for is alive and you are looking for the baby in the mortuary. I want to let you understand. Dead people are found in the mortuary. The people who are alive are not in the mortuary. And therefore, this lady is going to the tomb to look for the body of Jesus Christ. He was not there. He promised that he will be down in the grave for three days and on the third day he will rise again. I want to speak to us. Allow me to speak to us. There are some things in our lives that have died. There are some things in our family that have died. There are some things in our, in our country that are dead. You know, we are living in an economy that is not only on the knees, it is on a dead bed. It is almost dead. I want to help us understand. Our economy in Kenya can rise up again. Yes. Our economy can rise up again. Yes. Some of us are going through experiences of dying jobs. Your job has just died. You are just fired. You are just removed from work. I want to let you understand. Your job can resurrect again. You can get another job. I'm talking to a people whose accounts are depleted. They, their finances, their banks are already negative. 
I want to help you understand whatever is dead in your life, whatever is dead in your family, whatever is dead in your business, I want to declare as a prophet of God, may it rise up again. May you be able to be alive again. We will not be able to suffer the consequences of death because the Bible says he came to save, he came to deliver, he came to set free, he came to heal. May he heal this nation. May the Lord Jesus Christ heal this nation. And as he begins healing the nation, may he begin healing the nation from the smaller unit of family. Oh, our families may be healed. That our children may be healed. Healed from what? Some of us, our children don't have where to sleep. Our children do not have what to eat. Our children do not have what to dress. I want to help you understand. Whatever is dead in your life, give it a name. And as we will be going to pray, we will be able to pray that whatever died, even if your finances already died, you are working through negatives. You are living on borrowing. You are living on debts. I want to help you understand. The Lord can remove you from your debt. The Lord can remove you from your poverty. The Lord can be able to reveal you and deliver you from your deathbed. I want to help you understand. The Bible says you are looking for the living among us the dead. Jesus Christ is alive. He is alive today. He came to save. He came to deliver. He came to set free. He is alive. He is not in. And as we celebrate uh, the Easter Sunday, we are here rejoicing. And it doesn't matter what we are going through as a nation. What we are celebrating, the commemoration of uh, the Passover, the, the, the celebration of Easter. It is about the condition of our heart. What is the condition of your heart? this morning. What is the condition of your family in regard to the saving grace of Jesus Christ? The Bible says, let me take us through again to Mark so that I can be able to bring this sermon to closure. Mark where we were, Mark chapter number, uh, chapter number 16. Let me help us understand the verse and then we will be able to finish. Verse number 16, the book of Mark. The Bible says, in verse number five, verse number five, let me, what I need is not verse number five. The women were shocked. Part B of verse number five, the women were shocked. Verse number six, the Bible says, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He was crucified. He is not in the grave. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. I'm not the one speaking that. The scripture is saying Jesus is not among the dead. Jesus is alive. He, Jesus is not in the grave. Jesus is alive. I want to have you understand because he is alive, you will be alive. Because Jesus Christ is alive, your business shall be alive. Because Jesus Christ is alive, your marriage shall be alive. You know, I'm speaking to the families whose marriages are on the verge of death. I'm speaking to families whose marriages are on the verge of divorce. I'm speaking to families whose marriages are on the verge of separation. Jesus Christ is alive. And because he's alive, your marriage shall be alive. I want to help you understand. Jesus Christ is not in the grave. And because Jesus Christ is not in the grave, your business shall not go to the grave. I want to help you understand. Your business shall get life again. Your business shall flourish again. Your business shall make profits again. I want to help you understand. He went to the cross that you may not go to the cross. He suffered that you may not suffer. I want to declare no more suffering in your life. No more suffering in your business. No more suffering in your family. I declare to the whole country and wherever you will be watching from, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It must come to a stop in the name of Jesus. This is the third day when Jesus Christ was crucified. He resurrected. He is not dead. May you become life again. He is not in the grave. May you be removed from the grave. Some of us, where people declare that we will not be alive today as a prophet of God, I am declaring you will be alive today. And not only today, you will see your children's children in the name of Jesus. Here some people declare and say, you are not going to make it as a prophet of God. I am declaring you are going to make it even after COVID-19, you will be there. Even after... 
2020, you will be there. You are not going to die. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm declaring life in your family, declaring life in your marriage, declaring life in your job, declaring life in your businesses in the name of Jesus. Even where you have no money, I want to declare money will resurrect in your life. You are money from the north, you are money from the south, you are money from the east and the west. I declare, may it locate you in the name of Jesus. Some of us are saying, now, 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 what happened? What do I do? What do I do? My last Lord is at the door. What do I do? Stand still and see the salvation of God. Stand still and see the miracle of God. God wants to come and he does not come early. He doesn't come late. He comes right on time. May your miracle be on time. May your salvation be on time. May your success be on time. May everything that you need be right on time in the name of Jesus. From this Sunday, as we celebrate Easter, maybe you have no money to even buy chapati. Chapati, Easter is not about chapati. Easter is not about new clothes. Easter is not about anything else. Easter is about Jesus Christ being alive in your heart. 